Hello, thought I would do a video today on evaluating a lathe bed for where. If you're gonna be purchasing a lathe, I see a lot of discussions online about um, how to check a lathe for wear, something very important that you're gonna to wanna to do before you buy a machine, especially if you're gonna use it in a, you know, a functioning working shop, not just a hobby shop. And I'm gonna use this lathe today as an example. This is my Logan 6560. This is a 14 by 40 lathe, 14 inch swing, 40 inches between centers. And the reason I'm gonna use this lathe today as an example is this lathe has quite a bit of wear. It, uh, before I got the lathe, it uh, was kept in conditions that weren't really ideal and it really wasn't maintained the way it probably should have been and, it, and as a result, it has a lot of wear in the bed, especially up here near the chuck. And uh, we'll, we'll get through that and show you how to, how to detect, detect that. But I do wanna say off the bat, I, I'm able to use this machine still, even with the bed wear. Um, a machinist can use machines that are very worn to produce good parts. And that's kind of a sign of a experienced machinist. Um, if you're a hobbyist, you're probably not gonna need to have a lot of super precision anyways. And if you're more experienced, you're gonna be able to compensate for things like bed wear or backlash in the cross feed of the compound and different things like that. But let's get started and I'm gonna show you uh, a number of ways to do it. And if you add all of these different ways of evaluating bed wear together, you'll get a really good idea for you know how, how bad the bed is worn. Okay, so the first step in evaluating lathe bed wear is just a visual inspection. So you're gonna to wanna to come up to the ways and you're gonna to wanna to get a really good look at the ways and you can see this lathe, like I said, you, I mean, you immediately, you're seeing ding marks here as we get closer to the headstock. We're gonna see that on the tailstock ways, this had a lot of damage up in here. A lot of things came out of the chuck on this lathe, you can see damage here and here and what you're looking for is ridges on the ways you know you can use your fingernail to go on and get a feel with your hand you can feel when there's damage uh, things that you can't even really see you'll be able to feel it with your hand so go along the whole length of the bed and look for damage points that's just a quick visual inspection before you go any further. If you come to look at a lathe and it's got big chunks out of the ways, if it's got huge, I mean, there's a scar here, you can see. There's a scar along the ways here. If it's got huge gouges taken out, I went to look at one today, an old South Bend that had some pretty deep gouging. That's a warning sign. You can also check at the end where the, the carriage doesn't really come down very frequently, clean the oil off here, and you can see where, what it would look like and feel like where there's less worn areas. Another area that's gonna have hardly any wear would be way up here where the carriage doesn't really get up there. So do a visual inspection. Okay, test number two. We've done our visual inspection and now we're on to test number two. This is a very basic test that you need no measuring tools for. Set your carriage lock, bring your carriage up as far as you can towards the headstock. And set your carriage lock just finger tight, not extremely tight. You wanna be able to move it freely, okay? Maybe a little bit tighter than that. And now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move the carriage all the way down to the end of the, where the tailstock is. And the reason for this is, the tailstock, or the carriage lock is working up against the bottom part here of the bed. And if the bed is worn here, it will require more tightness to draw up the stop to lock the carriage than it would down here because you can think of the carriage as actually dropped down some if, if, it's, if there's wear. 
So if the, if the bed has a significant amount of wear, like this bed, I'm going to find that as I move the carriage towards the tailstock end, that we will get more tightness, or it'll feel more tight in the hand wheel as I go along. So let's try it out. And right now I'm starting to feel a little bit more tension than I had at the beginning. It was very loose at the beginning. Now it's getting tighter. It's getting much tighter. I can still turn the carriage wheel, but it's actually getting pretty darn tight. So what's telling me is there's significant wear from this point of the bed to this point. Now that I'm about three quarters of the way back. And, and what you'll find is, is that most of your wear is going to be in this part of the lathe. Because most of the operations of the lathe are being done near the chuck. So what you can do is, we found out that my carriage started to get tight about here. About midway to two-thirds the way down the bed. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back here again now that it's a little over halfway down. And, of course, I loosened it when I moved it back. Now I'm going to just finger tight it again and see how much wear there is from the center of the bed to the end near the tailstock. Let me just make sure that's not I saw it move. Okay, now. I'm detecting no change until right here. I'm near, getting near the end of the travel and it's starting to get more tight. So there's somewhere from the midpoint to the tailstock end, there's significant wear from the chuck to the center of the bed. Now, let's go on to test number three. We had a visual inspection. Then we did the lock of the carriage or the tightening of the carriage lock as a second test. And now we're going to get into using a measuring tool to try to figure this out. Now, I want to say right off the bat, there's no way to indicate the exact amount of bed wear on a lathe without having the lathe bed itself on a large enough surface plate that you would have a reference surface, a known reference surface to indicate from, independent from the lathe. That would be the only true way to indicate the wear. However, you can get a pretty good idea by using an indicator in the way that I'm going to show you here. And we're going to use the indicator in multiple locations and then try to figure out kind of an average about what the wear might be like. So we're going to go by the assumption that most of the wear on a lathe bed is taking place on the carriageways, which on this lathe would be the V-way here, and in the back there's a flat way on the other side of the lathe that the carriage rides on. And <clears throat> the reason for that is being most of the work is being done here near the chuck, where you're constantly moving the carriage wheel and your or threading or whatever you're doing. The operations are as we saw, the wear is, is mostly at the, at the chuck end. And it's going to be at, on the carriage ways. The tailstock ways tend not to get as worn, especially near the front or the headstock end of the lathe, because how often are you going to have your headstock, I mean your tailstock, right up here towards the chuck or towards, you know, whatever you have on your spindle, a faceplate or, you know, if you're, if you're turning between centers, whatever it is. It's very unlikely that you're going to have the tailstock up here all the time moving, causing wear on the tailstock ways. So the tailstock ways of this machine is the flat way on the operator side and the V-way on the opposite side. So what I've done is I've set up the stare at last word indicator. And I've set it with just about five thousandths of preload on the tailstock way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now move the carriage towards the tailstock, having the indicator on the tailstock ways, and this is gonna show us if there's a significant amount of change between the carriage ways and the tailstock ways. 
So let's try that now. And you're gonna see that this lathe has significant wear. So. And I'm moving along. And so far, so good, right? But here, starting to see the indicator move. We are at 5,000, so I'm just gonna back up so you can see. <clears throat> Over that distance, we changed five thousandths on the indicator. There we go. I'm basically at the tailstock, and we have a significant amount of wear here. As we go, I'm going to keep track of this. The tailstock flat way was minus seven thousandths as we traveled from the chuck to the tailstock. Now we're gonna check the tailstock V-way. Some machines are different. They have two V-ways. Some machines have all flat ways like an Alice. But this works on any style of way. I have now advanced the preload on the indicator to about 10 thousandths now because I'm worried about the amount of wear we're gonna find. So let's go ahead and travel. Now, do you see what just happened there? From about here to here, we found that the indicator advanced plus about a thousandths. So it's more worn here, it's gone up here, and now it's gonna start dropping off steep as we go back, I believe. Okay, we are at the tailstock and we've recorded minus five thousandths. Making note that in this section, we grew one thousandths, we could say. For the purposes of demonstration, I did not put the indicator on the back side of the V-way. You can if you want. If you want to get a more, you know, trying to get every bit of data you can, you can, you can check that. We're going to do the same thing on this one. We're only going to check the V-way on this side for the purpose of this video. Now, we are doing the opposite of what we just did. Now we're going to check the carriageways. And what I've done is I've brought the tailstock up. I've moved the carriage to the end of the lathe. And I have the last word indicator set with about seven thousandths of preload or so at the chuck. And I've put ever so slight of a drag on the tailstock lock so that the tailstock isn't rocking as I slide it back. And what we're going to do is we're now going to slide the tailstock back on the tailstock ways. And we're going to see how the number compares to what we saw with the previous method of using the indicator. So let's take a look. Very difficult to do that one-handed. So I am reading three and a half thousandths plus three and a half thousandths. All right, I'm set up on the flat way of the carriage. And we have five and a half thousandths. 
you may be asking yourself, why are they the opposite? Why is, is it that when we have the mag mount on the tailstock to measure the carriage way, we received positive readings, plus five and a half thousandths and plus three and a half thousandths. But when we had the mag mount on the carriage due to the tailstock ways, we had minus seven thousandths on the flat way and plus five thousandths on the V way. <clears throat> the reason for that is simple. If you imagine in your mind what's happening to the indicator as this moves, you're going to have that mirror or opposite effect because as the tailstock slid back, as we're measuring the carriage way, there's more wear in this area. As the carriage moves, the bed is actually growing because there's less wear, five and a half thousandths. When we were on mag mount on the carriage up here, we started off in the low area and we had the indicator on the tailstock ways. So as we moved, the carriage is riding up the way as the ways are growing on the carriage ways, which is what we saw positive. That's going to take pressure off the indicator needle as the carriage is going up like this. So when you have wear on the carriage ways, which is typical in an older lathe, if you do this indicator method, you'll find that they're a mirror effect. And you can see that we got five and a half thousandths positive with the tailstock on, with the tailstock having the mag mount. And we got negative seven thousandths when we had the mag mount on the carriage. So there's, you know, a slight difference there, a thousandths and a half. And the same thing here, three and a half to five is about a thousandths and a half. So to me, that's, that's reading, you know, within what we would expect for a crude method of using an indicator on the bed ways. So how much bed, how much wear does this bed actually have? We don't know with precision certainty without taking this bed and setting it on a surface plate, but we know, I would say, that we are five to seven thousandths of wear, plus or minus one and a half thousandths, I would say, which, you know, is enough to know that there is significant wear on this bed. Now, the next method of checking for bed wear and evaluating a lathe bed can be done with a sterret or another precision combination square. And what we're gonna do is, is I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna have somebody film for me here and I've dimmed the lights in my shop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the combination square up against the bed like this on sections of the bed. And then I'm gonna use a flashlight below and I'm gonna look for light, changes in the amount of light that I can see underneath the blade of the combination square. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna show me if there's a spot like here where there was a 1,000th change, I should be able to see more light on the edges of the combination square than I can in the center because the center is the high point. So let's take a look using the combination square and flashlight method. So I'm set up now, I have my flashlight, and I have the stare at square just holding it by hand with the blade against the ways. And I'm gonna put my flashlight underneath like this. And I'm gonna get the stare at square nicely positioned onto there. And I'm just gonna look down underneath, checking for light in any areas that I can see. And right now I can see a little bit of light where I expected to see it from before where we know we started to have the bed wear here. And hopefully you can see where we found the wear to begin on this lathe, which is probably about past a foot beyond the chuck. I can see light along the bottom edge, especially right in here of the stair square. So I know there's wear in that area. I'll then move down, I'll just move along the whole bed of this lathe and I'll do the See, down here I'm not seeing any light. There's no light that I can see at the bottom of the square. But when I move back over here where the worn area is, 
I can see a little bit of light coming through, especially in this area right here. Make sure that it's a precision square so that you know that this is fairly flat. And then go along the entire length of the bed, tailstock ways and carriage ways with the flashlight and check where you can see light there. All right, so the final test I wanna show you is using my Starrett 98Z 18 inch long precision level. And you don't need to use the level for the purposes of this, but what you can do is, as I know that this 98Z is pretty darn flat, flatter than the combination square that I just used in the previous test. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a Craftsman USA feeler gauge set here, and I've taken the one and a half thousandths leaf out of the feeler gauge set, and I'm going to go along the stair at 98Z, and I'm going to try to find places where this feeler gauge will slide. And if I can find places that the feeler gauge slides underneath, I know that area is more worn than the areas around it. Now right here, Again, about where we found that the wear was coming in on this lathe, I can feel underneath here that it's, the feeler gauge will start. It won't go the whole way, but it will start. Whereas other places, I can't even get it to start. Now look at up here by the chuck. Let me switch hands here briefly. I'm unable to start the feeler gauge up here. There was one spot up in here where I could get it to start, just begin. But look here near the chuck where a lot of the wear was. Not only can I get the feeler gauge to start, but I know there's some places where it's actually going to slide in, right here, near the end. I can get it to start and to probably go in. Oh, well, I don't know how far that's going, but it's, it's a significant way compared to here. And what I'll do is very carefully and slowly work my way around this entire lathe with this feeler gauge and if one and a half thousandths won't go, I'll go to a one thousandths leaf. And I'll use the smallest leaf that I can. Well, look here. The feeler gauge can definitely start. Not there, but here where the nick was. Oh, look at here. It can go in again. And a lot right here. I can get the whole feeler gauge in through there. So, <clears throat> I'm not going to show you the entire process, but you get the drift. Use your precision level or something else that is long enough and flat enough to be a known good surface and work your way around the entire lathe checking for wear. So hopefully you found this video helpful in evaluating bed wear specifically on an older lathe. And there are other tests you could do if the lathe was under power. Now this lathe is under power, but for the purpose of this video, we're pretending that you might have been going to check out this lathe, you know, from an auction or from a private seller and marketplace. Maybe the lathe isn't under power and you're just trying to find if the bed is worn without having to use the lathe and only using some small amount of hand tools and a dial indicator and a mag base. Putting all the information together, we found out that the lathe does have significant wear from about here to here, maybe about close to halfway down the bed. That's where the majority of the wear is. And you will find, as you look at more lays and test additional lays, that that's almost always where the wear is. So again, I hope you found this video helpful. And let me know in the comments what you think. Are there other methods that you can think of of testing for bed wear? And what do you think about the methods that I showed you tonight?